morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a bright and sunny day. It's really raining. Nico's house. They're living in it now. We gotta wait. I'm guessing <coughs> it's it's tight. Um, it's dated today, so I'm guessing either late tonight or tomorrow. I'm guessing tomorrow. Guessing either late tonight. Mm. Oh, excuse me. You know what I don't like when I share someone's uh, live with people and I don't reach them at all. Yes. Look at my ponytail, how big it is. Look. I wish I could read that so I don't have to move. <clears throat> Just wait a couple more minutes. Oh, I pressed the wrong one. Good morning, Tiffany. I'm good. How are you? I slept okay. How did you sleep? That's good. Guess who moved into their house? It's in the um the community tab. Um it's dated today, so I'm guessing either very late tonight or tomorrow it will be up.
Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Okay, let's let's wait a couple minutes more. Just a bit more. I'm so glad they have the house. I'm gonna right, let's start. I told Danielle that we're up. Devotions are up. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day and your beautiful earth. And thank you for allowing us to wake up today. And thank you for what you did for us in the past present and what you did for us in the future what you will do for us in the future sorry for the sins i have sinned and thank you for helping me keep stay on the right path and away from the wrong path and please heal the people i'm about to read either from their um personal issues any kind of health issue um mentally or physically the names are miss diane and her daughters Tiffany and Paula for chronic pain. Vicky and her boys for mental health. Cindy and Jeff for personal issue. Jeannie um, for her health. A few different health issues. Edna, Andy, Greg, and Al Roker for cancer. Stacy for her heart. Mr. Will and Mrs. Will and Arnie Will all for their health. Nico and their family to enjoy the brand new house and to continue to get well. Shia to continue to get bigger and continue to help Jason Cloud to get better. And please soften the hearts of people that have hearts of stone. Soften them up so they can be friendly and love everybody again. In the name of Jesus, amen. Choosing to honor God. Dear God, thank you for loving me faithfully throughout my life. Amen. Choosing to honor God by Jennifer Benson Schultz. To the faith you show yourself faithful. Wait, to the faithful you show yourself faithful. And that is... Psalms chapter 18, verse 25. Psalms chapter 18, verses 20 through 27. 
Good morning, Danielle. I hope you I hope you're feeling well and you had a good sleep. In the novella Family Happiness by Leo Tolstoy, main characters Sergey and Masha meet when Masha is young and imper impersonable. Sergey is an older, well-traveled businessman who understood the world beyond the rural settings where Masha lives. Over time, the two fall in love and marry. They settle in the countryside, but Masha becomes bored with her surroundings. Sergei, who adores her, arranges a trip to St. Petersburg. There, Masha's beauty and charm brings her instant popularity. Just as the couple is about to return home, a prince arrives in town wanting to meet her. Sergei knows he can for he can force Masha to leave him. But he I'm sorry, to leave with him, but he lets her make the decision. She chooses to stay and her betrayal breaks his heart. Oh that's sad. Like Sergei I think it's Sir Sergei, I don't know. God will never force us to be faithful to him because he loves us. He lets us choose for for or against him. Our first choice for him happens when we receive his son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for our sins. First John chapter four verses nine and ten. After that we have a lifetime of decisions to make. Will we choose faithfulness to God as his spirit guides us or let the world entice us? David's life wasn't perfect, but he often wrote about keeping the ways of the world and the good outcome that came from, from doing so. Psalms chapter 18 verses 21 through 24. When our choices honor God, we can experience the blessings David described to the faithful. God shows himself faithful. Let's reflect. Mm. When was the last time you made a difficult decision that honored God? How did it affect your relationship with Him? That's something to think about. Let's pray. Dear God, help me to honor you with the choice choices I make. Thank you for loving me faithfully without my life, throughout my life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. <clears throat> the superscription of Psalm 18 tells us that David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies. David was considered a man after God's own heart. 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. Acts chapter 13 verse 22. Because of this, God had promised David through the prophet Nathan, I will never take my love away from David. I will set him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. First Chronicles chapter 17 verses 13 and 14. David would always have a de de descendant on the throne, and from his family line came Jesus. Acts chapter 13, verse 23. Yet David committed adultery and had a man killed. Why would God esteem such 
a flawed man? It was because David had absolutely faith in God, evidence in the victory over Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17, he loved the scriptures. Psalms chapter 119, verse 14, oh, 47. I don't have that one down. I did not write that one down. I did not see it. And when he sinned, he repented and sought God's forgiveness. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 13, and Psalms 51. There you go. It's up now. Oh, right, let's read all this. There's a lot to read. Uh, Romans 8, chapter 3, oh. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is re revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Psalms. Psalms, chapter 18, 20 through 27. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocent innocence. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not turned from my God to follow evil. I have followed all his regulations. I have never abandoned his decrease. decrease. I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He was seen. He has seen my innocence. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the people, no, to the, to the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself screwed, shrewd, excuse me, shrewd. You rescue the humble, but you hum humiliate the pr proud. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, what else is from Psalms? I have a few up here. Do I have to read a whole chapter of Psalms? Yeah, Psalms 50. Let's go to uh, Psalms 119. Verse... 47. Ooh. How I delight in your commands. How I love him, them. Psalm 51 we have to... Listen to. Of 
because of your unfailing love, because of your great... Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. Yes. Next is... First John chapter four nine and ten God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we love God. But we, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 13. Verse 14. But now your kingdom must end. For the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people. Because you have not kept the Lord's commands. Next is 1 Samuel chapter 17, we'll listen to. Chapter 17, Goliath challenges the Israelites. The Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Soko in Judah and Ezekah at Ephesdenim. Saul countered by gathering his Israelite troops near the Valley of Elah. So the Philistines and Israelites faced each other on opposite hills, with the valley between them. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet, and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor, and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor-bearer walked ahead of him, carrying a shield. 
Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Jesse sends David to Saul's camp. Now David was the son of a man named Jesse, an Ephrathite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shimei, had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army. But David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champions strutted in front of the Israelite army. One day, Jesse said to David, Take this basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers. And give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they are doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts, as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldiers standing nearby, What will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that is the reward for killing him. But when David's oldest brother Eliab heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now, David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. David kills Goliath. Yeah. Don't worry about this, Philistine, <clears throat> David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield-bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. 
David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Israel routs the Philistines. When the Philistines saw that their champion yeah. was dead, they uh. turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, yes. chasing them as far as Gath yeah. and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road, from Shearim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. David took the Philistines' head to Jerusalem but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. As Saul watched David go out to fight the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of his army, Abner, whose son is this young man? I really don't know, Abner declared. Well, find out who he is, the king told him. As soon as David returned from killing Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David replied, his name is Jesse. And we live in Bethlehem. Okay. Now let me mark these things off. Okay. Acts. Chapter 13, verse 22. But good... No, sorry. <laughs> but God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter eleven, verse thirteen. Then David invited him to dinner and got him drunk. But even then, he couldn't get Uriah to go home to his wife. Again, he slept at the palace entrance with the king's palace guard. First Chronicles. This is the last one. Chapter 17, verses 13 and 14. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my favor from him, as I took it from the one who ruled before you. I will confirm him as king over my house and my kingdom. For all time, and his throne will be secure forever. Did 
does anybody want me to read anything for them today? <laughs> Both Matthew, huh? <laughs> All right, um... Matthew eleven twenty eight. Then Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give I and, and I will give you rest. Excuse me. Let's read that again so it can be good. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you. Who are weary and carry carry heavy heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Yes, that's a good one. Thank you, Danielle. I like that one. And Matthew five three through ten. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heavens is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be confirmed. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. How God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice. For they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are prosecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, thank you, Tiffany, and thank you, Danielle. Is there anything else from any... Well, that You're the only two people here. I guess everybody else is still sleeping. And that will be it for today. You, yeah. And thank you, ladies, for coming. You know where I am if you, if you want to talk. Love, don't judge. Peace out. Oh, that's not right. <clears throat>